So we're here with Justin Grant, defending national champ. How's that feel? Feels good. Yeah. How, tell us, like the season, and the thing that I talked about is you did not have a DNF. No. No, we had, we finished Circle City like a couple laps down because we, we came to the work area and we didn't get back out. Um, then we caught the next yellow and went out like three laps down. But, uh, but short of that, yeah, we were, we, we finished everything and, uh, you know, it's a testament to, to Dylan, who, you know, who works on this stuff. Dylan Cook uh, takes care of everything, and, and just, uh, yeah, we didn't, have a, we didn't have a single failure all year long. Um, you know, the only, the one at Circle City was because I crashed the thing. So <laughs> it wasn't, uh, yeah, no, no mechanical failures, and, and we had pretty, pretty smooth sailing all year, racetrack-wise. How, and I, I hate to say this, but how unusual is that? Pretty, pretty unusual. Yeah, yeah. I uh, laughed with some of my buddies at the end of the year and said, "I didn't turn a sprint car over a single time this year. I didn't, I didn't flip once." Is that bad luck to say that? I don't know. I think now the year's over, it's fine. Okay. I think if I would have been like in August, if I'd have been like, you know, I haven't turned over yet this year, I think I'd have turned over a whole bunch. But I think, I think we're, I think we're good. It's over now. So you have Silver Crown Championship, Sprint Car Championship. Do you look towards the Midget Championship, or do you just do what Justin Grant always does, which is just race? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely just racing, right? But uh, but no, I would I would really like to to pick up Midget Championship, and you know to to say you know not considering it at all or or whatever, you know, um, especially through the winter when you have time to sit around and consider such things. Uh, definitely, yeah, definitely want to pick up Midget Championship and, and add my name to the, the list of Triple Crown guys. Uh, would be would be huge for me. It'd be it'd be a you know pretty big accomplishment for myself and I'd be uh, be very pleased with that. But uh, once we you know once we get once we get racing I, I kinda tend to just just get racing. <laughs> <laughs> well that's let's go back and talk okay, so we're gonna change the change the subject here, change the tone a little bit. Uh, 2017 you about mm -hmm. called it called it quits right there. You were about done racing. Yeah, 16. 16. 16. 16. I think yeah. it was 16 or 17. Yeah, but. 16 got pretty got pretty rough. Um, we were, you know, not making a lot of money. I wasn't making a lot of money, and things weren't things weren't really working out, and it just felt like I wasn't making any progress, you know. And um, and then uh, and then had kids on the way, and and you know things were bills were starting to stack up, yeah. and there wasn't. You could tell pretty quick that you know the old boat wasn't going to float like that. So we, uh, I was gonna, I was gonna go drive a dump truck and and just try and just try and make some money and go get a job and you know figured it was time to maybe give up and go be responsible. And uh, I got the got the call towards the end of towards the end of uh, 16 from the McGee family. Um, they they had had an issue and Max wasn't going to be able to run a Friday night at Bloomington. And I had kind of just given up on sprint car racing. I hadn't run in probably a month, and uh, and I told him no, I didn't want to. And Ashley was like, my wife Ashley yeah. was like, you know, who's that? And I was like, oh, it was the McGee's. And she's like, well, they want. And I'm like, oh, they want me to run their car Friday in Bloomington. And she's like, well, that's a good car. You ought to go run it. I was like, yeah, may, I don't know. I'll call them back if they don't have anybody at the end of the week. I'll run it. So I called them back like Thursday, and was like, you know, hey, you find anybody to run that thing yet? And they're like, no, we don't have anybody. It's like, all right, I'll be there. So we went and we, we won Bloomington, which and it was a it was a local race at Bloomington, mm -hmm. but still for, at that point it was huge for me, right? Not yeah. that you know, no sprint car win is an easy win, but but at that point in my career, like just you know, winning anything was was huge. Um, so we won that and they were like they're like, Hey, you wanna go to South Dakota? It was the uh, I forget what they called it that year. It was like a two day show at Houston, it's paid fifty thousand mm -hmm. to win. And uh, so I'm like, sure. So I call Ashley, I'm like, Hey, we're not coming home, we'll see you <laughs> Monday. So we we towed through the night up to up to Hughes and we ran I think we ran second both nights. Um, got home Monday, you know, and, and had a bunch of bunch of cash in my pocket. And it's like, yeah. shoot, I ain't going to work now. <laughs> <laughs> this is working out. So I was actually supposed to start I was supposed to start my job on uh, Monday morning. I was supposed to be there at five AM on oh, Monday. Oh really? So, so you I, already had a dump truck yeah, job lined up. Yep, Holy yep, smokes. Yeah, and had all you know all licensing and stuff going on and, and uh, <laughs> And I, so I call him, I call the guy that was going to be working for, Bob Fox, who sponsors uh, Kenny Baldwin stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was going to go to work for his paving company. And uh, so I call him like four in the morning on the way home from Hussett's. And I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm not going to make it. You know, and he's like, yeah, I know. I watched you on TV. So that's all right. You're a race car driver, not a dump truck driver. I like, ah, thanks. And so he's like, yeah, if you ever need anything, let me know. I'm like, okay, cool. So that, that all worked out. And, and uh, then I finished out the year for them. And we went. And uh, I think it might have been the next weekend we went. And we won the sprint car portion of Four Crown. 
um, then rolled into the winter and, and had, had our kids, um, Bubba and Charlotte, and uh, we were in the hospital uh, during Chili Bowl mm -hmm. with them, and because uh, they were in the NICU, and uh, Tim Clausen called and asked if, if you know they had had they had had an issue and needed somebody kind of last minute, and so again my wife's like. Well, you probably better go do that. It's a pretty good car. <laughs> so we went down, we did that, and we, we won our prelim night and, and then ran third on Saturday. And uh, it was just a, just a whirlwind, right, from, from, from going into September, you know, having a job lined up to go drive a dump truck and just do that um, and, and kind of be done racing to within a couple of months, all of a sudden I've won, like, some of the biggest races in my career and, yeah. and had rides lined up and things happening and kids and and uh and and everything so it was uh that was a it's a pretty you know transformational well yeah <laughs> time well, for me there's two things you said during that that, that part that it, that struck with me and both times it was the same thing you said that ashley mm -hmm. said you should go run that car yeah how cool is it for you obviously you married her but to have somebody from a racing family that marries you as a racer yeah. that totally gets it like yeah how 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 much easier does that make your life? Yeah, have, having Ashley, you know, be, being married to Ashley makes makes my life way easier. Um, you know, I, I joke a lot that, you know, I'm lucky because she doesn't know any better. <laughs> her, her dad being Bubby and, and her brothers uh, being, you know, heavily involved in racing. And and uh, that's, that's kind of how they all grew up and, and what they know. And, and um, but, but still, she's, you know, above and beyond be supportive and always, always push me to go and go and go out on the road, go race and take rides, um, you know, you know, throughout all of my, you know, slumps that I've had, she's always, she's always been the one kind of, you know, propping me up and telling me to keep at it. And, uh, and, you know, I, I, I probably would have given up a long time ago if it wasn't for her. Well, that's in something, and I want to touch on something else I thought of. I, you told me a story. I hope it was you. Uh, one time, whenever you moved to the Midwest, mm -hmm. you had arranged, had an arrangement to move to the Midwest mm -hmm. and you showed up and nobody picked you up from the yeah, airport. Yeah, I was a walker. <laughs> <laughs> Tell yeah. us that story. Yeah. Um, so, well, that story kind of goes back a little bit. So I had, I met Bones Borscher, um and Bones introduced me to Jeff Walker at Chili Bowl. Uh, and, and I told Bones, you know, I'd love to get to Indiana. You know, I was like, I was like 17 years old about racing midgets on the West Coast. And, and Bones was like, well, at Chili Bowl, you know, I'll introduce you to some people. So he took me around one day and introduced me to some people. And, and Jeff Walker was one of them. And Jeff's like, oh, yeah. He's like, come back. He's like, I got a bunch of sprint cars need worked on and shop you can live in. And he's like, I'll give you 300 bucks a week and you can stay in the shop. And, you know, you can maybe somebody get you in a car. Maybe we can get you in one of our cars at some point. But, but you know, at least be some work for you through the yeah. summer. Like awesome, cool. So I get home and and pack my stuff up and catch a flight back to back to Indiana. And we kind of arranged, you know, like when I was going to be there and everything. <laughs> and uh, I land and you know I text him like, hey, you know I I landed in Indy. Oh, what for? I'm like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> he's like, oh shoot, well I'm in Florida for next couple weeks. I'm like, oh okay. Well, so the only other person I knew. And Indy really was uh, Pat Sullivan. Mm -hmm. And so I called Pat. Pat came and picked me up, and I lived at Pat's house for like two weeks. So I waited for Walker to get back from uh, from from Florida, where I think it was Florida, wherever he was. Uh, but Pat gave me a place to you know place to stay and fed me and gave me a car to drive and look, cruise around all the race shops, you know, and and uh, kind of get get my feet wet when I got back there. Well, that how like just to move and obviously that seems to be the trend and there's more than one racer talk about that, that if you want to race you got to move to the midwest how scary is that though i mean literally you just you met him at the chili bowl and then you packed up your bag and away you went yeah yeah i don't know i i don't ever really remember being that that scared or or it was just all like it was just all good things you know yeah. it was all it was all i was excited to go racing and there were sprint cars there and i was going to get to work on sprint cars and I, you know, I, I don't know. I've always been maybe a shade slow. I don't, I don't have bones. <laughs> I don't think about all the, all the bad possibilities, right? It's just everything that uh, I was just excited to get back there in, in any way I could do it, you know. And and if you've ever met Jeff Walker too, right? He's just like a bit magnetizing, right? He's yeah. he's, he's a ton of fun and just a lot of energy. And and it was, you know, I left left Chili Bowl thinking like this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a great time. Yeah. And uh, and it was. I was, you know, I worked for Jeff for about a year and a half. 
um, and then and then any time I got fired between <laughs> there, I would go back and work for him. And uh, but no, it was you know the the way he went racing was was so much fun um, that everything was everything was real relaxed. It was it was as much about the experience and and what we were doing between racetracks as much as what we were you know what you know and and we won lots of races um you know and he had really good guys driving for him good equipment um but uh just his his approach to it all made it so much fun that it probably kept me back there longer than i than i would have stayed mm -hmm. um you know because it was it was a long time you know i was i moved back there i wanted to drive race cars you know and yeah. you know i'm year in and haven't gotten in a car and 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 you know it's you start to get a bit down like well i don't really think this is gonna work out you know i think it's gonna happen uh but i was having so much fun going up and down the road with him racing that that i didn't i didn't really want to go home you know i was yeah. you know i'd been i'd worked construction at home and then and then worked for a dumpster company re refurb and dumpsters for a, a, an environmental hauling place and uh you know, it was it was go back to that or stay stay beating up and down the road racing sprint cars. And uh, you know, even though I wasn't driving, it was still closer to what I wanted to be doing than what I was doing at home. Yeah. When that's and you talk about beating up and down the road working on race cars, you're still to this day a very hands-on driver. Like you, I think you enjoy working on race cars almost as much as you enjoy driving them. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. I I I really I really I just I love sprint car racing. Right. Yeah. Like like I love the. I love the sport as a, as a whole, um, you know, and like like when I can be standing on the front stretch, like it's it's extra good, yeah. right? But but even even you know even you know post Volusia, right? Like we, we struggled at Volusia, we weren't very good, um, you know. Today this morning we're we're at the car wash, we're changing motors, we're getting things ready, and uh, I, I love that every bit as much as I love the rest of it, you know. I, I it's just fun, right? Yeah. There's not like there's not very many people that get to to live life the way we get to live life, right? You know, most you know, most people get up and they drive to their office or drive to their job and they do the same thing they did yesterday and it's the same thing they're gonna do tomorrow and it's the same thing they're gonna do for the next five years and and you know, doing this every day's every day's a, a new adventure, right? Yeah. And you're <laughs> and you're on your own schedule and you get to you're kind of in charge of your own destiny and, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. You know, sometimes the hours get a little long, right? You get yeah. a little tired but but it, it sure beats uh, it sure beats just you know trudging along. Well, that's and so you have the the way you got out here in the Midwest and became successful. And I asked Brady the same question I'm going to ask you. Mm -hmm. If you're giving advice to a young racer that mm -hmm. wants to do this for a living, what is the best piece of advice you can give them? Um. Well, I mean, the best single piece of advice I think would be you know to to any young racer just be enthusiastic about it right whatever whatever you're doing right like you know the old the old homage of if you're gonna sweep floors be the best floor sweeper you can be yeah. you know and and I when I when I moved back here I was I was so excited just to be around it that I think that, you know people gave me opportunities when maybe I hadn't earned them yet mm -hmm. just because they were excited about how excited I was you know yeah. and 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 I, I certainly never like I never got my foot in the door anywhere based on my resume, right? It was always it was always off of like a personal connection, right? right? Or a, hey, I met this guy and, and he liked me and he's gonna give me a shot, yeah. you know? And and uh, and and I think just just that enthusiasm, right? That and you don't see it like sometimes I th I think it it's it lacks a little, you know? Yeah. Guys get get used to just being out and and it, and it does like it can grind you down if you're not careful right like you yeah, can let oh, yeah. it you can let it wear you into the dirt pretty quick to where you're just like ah, ah another day <laughs> you know um, but no I think I think just just being just being enthusiastic about about doing it um, I think takes you takes you a long way and then there's there's a million things right technical things and, yeah. and other things that the one thing I think that that also really helped me um, was I was I was kind of you know, had to. I worked for Jeff for for a year and a half or whatever. And before that, I'd worked for Jimmy Sills out in California and Mike Henry, and a lot of guys that were really really sharp with race cars. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then, when I would, when I did start getting my foot in the door at some of these places, it was you know in cars that that maybe hadn't been running up front. Mm -hmm. um, but I had enough knowledge, even, even you know, albeit limited knowledge, but but enough knowledge to to go in, fix the race car and then drive it, 
and and so whether it was you know I was great at driving it or I just made the car enough better, better yeah. that I that it was easy enough for me to do my job that that it looked like an improvement when they put me in the car. Um, <laughs> so I, I kind of you know stepped my way through like that, right? It was mm-hmm. like, oh well, he made that thing go pretty good, you know, and and yeah. then I'd go to the next, you know, and 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 in part of you know I think it's easy to get. It was easier, I think, when I came mentally, just because there was no like, there wasn't like the social media, there wasn't mm-hmm. the all of the all the, the the you know even the flow. Like flow is great, right? But but I got to make all of my mistakes and and do yeah. all of my stupid things in in the dark, right? right? Like the only people that saw it were the people that were there to see it. Yeah, you know. So you got to you got to really learn and 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 make mistakes and and not be. On a on a stage all the time. Right. Where now, like, like you're kind of on a stage all the time, even even at a local local sprint car track. So that's that's definitely a bit different. It would be it would be harder, I think, maybe to to come through like that mm-hmm. in, in one aspect. You know, on the other, it's easier because it's broadcasting what you are doing, right? right. Like your successes are are broadcast. Um, so I don't know, but it's certainly it's certainly a different environment now. That kind of makes me wonder a little bit.